already without any further delay and here's already an amazing artwork uh, from an amazing artist Patrick Brown let's see how many of you guys know him uh, so Patrick Brown is uh, working for I think now he's working for Marvel um, or DC Comics actually uh, this this is a fan art he did so this wasn't his actual work but uh, you can find him on Patreon and I'm going to have his uh, Patreon link in the description at the end of the video I haven't collected all the links in advance but I'm going to include his link there but if you look for Patrick Brown art you can find his work and he's an amazing talented artist and um, yeah this is a fan art of the Suicide Quad um, and the cool thing is that I have the layered file here I'm not going to do much with it I just thought that it's good to have a pleasant image on the screen when we are starting to talk about illustration but I just wanted to quickly show you how he starts with his sketch already digital sketch so it's all done in Photoshop he works in Photoshop then he does the clean outlines and then he does the rendering and this is the full composition with the background so if I zoom out we can see the whole thing again sketch clean outlines rendered characters and then full composition and by the way the feature I'm using if you haven't used this before it's called layer comps it's a very useful panel with which you can save different versions of your composition meaning that you are showing different layers so that's a uh, very useful one if you haven't tried that I highly recommend it so it's window layer comps and that's how you can save different layer options uh, save them and uh, quickly jump between them all right so um, the first thing that I wanted to talk about and that is going to be quite a big topic of the day uh, is the new features that we have for brushes in Photoshop so the first thing that I will show you is that we have the brushes panel I just placed it here on the left side of course you can have it anywhere but I just placed it on the left side so we can see it well and the best thing which I've been waiting for years is now finally we can group and organize our brushes in Photoshop uh, I don't know how you guys are with this feature but I it's like a rev revelation for me because I had so much brushes I was always lost and I could never find what I was looking for so finally it's a much easier and more convenient way that you can organize them and what I started doing because it's very recent I haven't really had time to load all the brushes that I used to work with but I started already organizing the brushes based on their author or the creator of these brushes and you probably heard of the name of Kyle T Webster or if you haven't then let me show you his website he's an amazing artist as well and he um, joined Adobe I think like a year ago roughly so he is a Photoshop brush creator and also obviously an amazing illustrator and the cool thing about that the fact that he joined Adobe means that he's now producing uh, and sharing all these brushes for free for Creative Cloud users so if you go on his website Kyle T Webster you will be able to find this link up here to go to his Photoshop brushes I'm going to also include these uh, links in the description at the end but I just wanted to show you that he now has the all these different brush packs that you can download and the reason I'm really excited about this is that he is really one of the best ones in making the most of all the different features uh, in the brush engine because it's a very complex thing in uh, Photoshop you can make so many different changes and he really makes the most of these features to reproduce traditional media uh, brushes like uh, you have here ink brushes you have uh, manga brushes you have oil uh, even even artists like impressionist artists you will find in the brushes and markers and obviously watercolor are amazing dry media for like charcoal and uh, yeah you you will see them I'm, I'm going to demo a few of these but um, I haven't had much time to 
play around with them. But let me show you first of all what you can do from Photoshop. From within Photoshop when you install the new version so you have to make sure that you have the current version installed CC 2018 and then in the brushes panel you can get into the panel menu and you will be able to choose the option get more brushes that's where you can quickly get to the brushes that you can download and then all you have to do is to double click on the files that you downloaded to load them in and they will automatically load as a group so it will be already grouped for you you like here I have these groups and the good thing is that you can even do subgroups so like I created a separate group for Kyle's brushes and then within that I have the additional uh, groups so let me just switch back to the uh, version where we just have the clean outlines let's say and I am going to make a selection of uh, the background now so just zoom a little bit closer and then let's just see maybe watercolor first so let's just test out watercolor brushes um, so let's see maybe this one all right so if I start painting with this you can see already that we have a very interesting effect on this brush so it's not just a simple brush tip shape but it's also a very nice uh, like a real watercolor mixing together but if I switch to another color that's when you see even more the the watercolor style or feel but of course we have lots of different variations Kyle created so many different versions of these brushes and you can find these type of brushes as well which takes a little bit longer to render so I'm just going to draw a little bit slower with this but you can see how it starts to build up the watercolor effect the more I paint over it. Now these brushes would be much faster if I wasn't live streaming. I tested it out and of course it works much faster most of them when I'm not doing live streaming. Live streaming, uh, streaming is usually a very uh, intense thing on the computer so some of these brushes might work fast, some of them might be a little bit slow uh, but believe me they work perfectly fine when I'm not live streaming. Now Let's just switch on to another one. Maybe we go into the, um, let's see, which one would be cool. Impressionist brushes are really cool. I love them. So for example, if we choose uh, Seurat, a French uh, artist's brush, maybe this one would be better. Uh, actually, let's see. Why is it drawing wood white? All right, there you go. So it's the pointy list style where you have little dots or you can get also even better maybe Cezanne uh, yes where you have even a little bit of mixture in the colors on the brushes so these are all now available and free to download and you can play around with them but believe me they are really uh, changing the way you can paint in Photoshop and especially getting the traditional media feel now what's also cool and this for me personally is again a huge improvement that not only brushes so not only the brush tool will come up within the brushes panel but you can actually save presets for all the brush based tools in one place so you don't have to use anymore the tool presets panel like we used to in the past instead you can use like the eraser the smudge tool the mixer brush tool all of these can be in the same panel and the way you can tell which one is which by looking at this little hint next to each of these brush presets like if I see a smudge uh, tool icon let me just zoom a little bit closer that means that this is actually a smudge tool so if I start painting with one of these brushes let's say this one here you can see that paint but then if I switch to a blender I can start blending these colors together it might be a little bit strong blend but if I switch to another one, and I'm just going to zoom back to see what the whole screen. So if I switch to another uh, Blender tool, you can see it starts to blend the existing details together. So that is really handy and useful to have these all in one place. And you can see the amazing uh, variety of colors and textures that we can create. 
So having all of these different type of tools in one place is great. And the way you can make sure that you can see whether it's a brush or a mixer brush or a smudge tool is by checking again from the panel menu whether you have the brush tip option on or not. Make sure you have it on, that way you will have that little hint there so you can see what is going on and what you are using it for. So for example, under let's say concept, if we go into that, we again have a mixer brush option with which we can blend into the existing color. So maybe let's just go into um, dry media is a good one, where we have an eraser. So within the brushes, this is a brush but it automatically works as an eraser. But see that this is already a smart eraser, not like the default eraser in Photoshop, because it creates this very nice texture around the edges. So even the eraser itself has a much more interesting effect than it used to uh, before. And then of course, once again, if we use the smudges, or maybe if, if we go into, let's just say, under probably, the uh, painting options, let me just find it. It's a little bit difficult to find what I'm looking for. I have to get used to all these different brushes. But maybe this one, we can see again, let me just mix this into a different color like that one. You can see how it nicely blends into the other colors, maybe another mixer brush. Let's try this one. That's one, and then if we switch to another one, it starts to mix them together. Maybe this is not as good as the other ones I tried. Um, there is also a big collection under the Mega Pack where we have the real oils. Uh, and under that we have these colors. Let me just try this one. This might be the best example. So if I start painting with this color, then I switch to another color. See how amazingly that blends together. That's again, the tool which we had before, the mixer brush, now really starts to make sense. Before, it was just a struggle to use it um, because it was not really convenient. It, it wasn't really doing what we expected. But now, really, Photoshop starts to uh, work similarly to like Corel Painter. Corel Painter was always great at uh, replicating and creating or simulating the natural media uh, tools. But now in Photoshop, thanks to Kyle's brushes and this new way of organizing and keeping everything in one place, this is just so much easier and so much better. Cool. So um, let me show you another thing that is new, and that is the smoothing. Now smoothing is something that hasn't been there. And again, it's a completely new feature. And you can find this here in the options bar. And that's a percentage that you can change. But to be able to show this to you, I'm just going to uh, remove all this, or maybe just move on to another side of this painting, maybe somewhere here. And I'm going to switch to the uh, tools under, let me just see, uh, probably from the classics we can choose maybe the brush pen. And uh, you can see already how I can paint with this. Now, because I'm using uh, the tablet, I'm using an Intuos, Wacom Intuos tablet. So it's already quite nice and smooth the way I'm drawing with it. But if I switch to the mouse, obviously, it will look much worse. And actually, I'm going to make my brush smaller just so you can see it even better what the smoothing can do. So I'm going to hide my brushes for a bit so we can see better what's going on. So if I paint without any smoothing, okay, with, without any smoothing and the brush, uh, sorry, and using the mouse, I'm, go I'm going to try to do some nice curves. Now, you will see that this is horrible, obviously, because it's really hard to do this with the mouse. And that's how it used to be before the smoothing feature. Now, of course, if you have a tablet, you can be much more dynamic with your curves, but still you will have these subtle inaccuracies because there's no smoothing. But now if I turn the smoothing up maybe to 100, 100 might be a little bit too much. Maybe let me just, just set this to 80. So 80% 80 smoothing. And then what happens 
is that Photoshop starts to smooth out my lines automatically while I'm drawing and you can see that the lines are being dragged and that is like a leash on which I'm dragging my line and it allows me to create these perfectly nice and smooth lines. Okay, so in comparison, you can see on the left side we have the mouse, in the middle we have the um, tablet without any smoothing and I'm, I'm going to actually write these down here just so you can see. So I will write uh, mouse, and that was, sorry, let me write this down. That, why do I write it like that? That's it. Okay, mouse, tablet, all right, and then this is smoothing. And the cool thing is with a high smooth value, you can actually draw these very nice lines that we have on the right side, even with the mouse. And if you don't believe me, you'll see I put down the pen, I put the tablet away, and I'm going to use the mouse and move a little bit here to the side. And look at this. If I use the smoothing to on a higher level, I can replicate really nice curves even with the mouse. Now, of course, you can fine tune how you are doing the smoothing, but essentially this can really help. Maybe not really for freehand drawing, uh, but for decora decoration, pattern design, uh, fashion design. Uh, these can be very useful, so decorational elements. Um, and so many other things. But even, even for concept art and drawing, there can be uses of this. So for example, if I wanted to draw, uh, let's say like a nicer shape, like a gate, instead of struggling with it, you see, I drew that with the mouse. Now let's try to draw a little bit further down here and then close it up. That is quite impressive, I think. So I can draw this with my mouse, all right, and <laughs> it would have been impossible almost to do this before. Okay, so for smaller details, obviously, it might not be as good, but it doesn't have to be curved details. We can draw straight uh, lines as well, but I find it working really nicely with curved details. Um, okay, so I can see some of you guys are saying that why are you using Photoshop for illustration? Uh, when there is Illustrator. Now there is a fair point there and Illustrator of course is the vector drawing application that is perfect for illustration uh, while Photoshop has its advantages for, for, for things like concept art and digital art. Um, the main advantage is of course that you can create very uh, detailed photorealistic illustrations or drawings. So if I switch back to here to, on the full composition here, this is something that you could create in Illustrator, but you would have to work really hard to create all the details, uh, while in Photoshop this is much faster. So speed painting is something only works really in Photoshop. In Illustrator you construct, in Photoshop you paint. So there's, there's a slight difference between the two of them, uh, but it's quite important difference. And there's a lot of artists like Patrick Brown who still prefers to work in uh, Photoshop because of the type of uh, style he has. So there's mainly a difference in style of artwork that you produce, which will define whether you are using Photoshop or Illustrator. In this video we are going to concentrate on the new features in Photoshop, but I'm going to do another one on Illustrator as well. For now, let's just uh, go through all the other options that we have here in Photoshop. And there is one thing that, um, yeah, I can see Nap is saying it quite nicely. You're saying that Photoshop is more artsy, uh, while Illustrator is more design style illustration. Yeah, that's, that's a good way of saying it. Um, and yeah, I am going to do the Illustrator CC 2018 as well. Uh, what I'm going to do is actually uh, cover the new features based on principles. So for illustration, I'm going to show this in this video everything that's new in Photoshop. And then I'm going to show more graphic design new features, which will be both Photoshop, Illustrator and InDesign. And then maybe another one for photographers and retouchers. Okay. Um, so, 
Let's move on and the next feature I wanted to show you is the symmetry painting. Now this is a really cool one as well. So let me just use the same layer, continue to use the same layer and I am going to use the feature up here again in the options bar. Let me zoom more closer to it. It looks like a butterfly. If you click on that you can find the different symmetry options. Now notice that this feature might not be there depending how your preferences are set up. So if you go into preferences in CC 2018, you will find the technology preview previews has an option called enable paint symmetry. Make sure you turn this on to be able to get this option. And once you have that, you will be able to turn on whatever symmetry you want. So for example, I can choose vertical symmetry, which would be most commonly used. And if I place the symmetry line here somewhere, I can already start painting. But let me switch back to my tablet and I am going to reduce the smoothing down maybe to around 20. And then if I start drawing something, let's say we draw, okay, something is not right. Which brush do we have? Okay, let's see. Uh, we have probably a blender brush. No, that's, that should be a normal brush. Okay, yeah, because we have the background on. I'm just going to switch back to the uh, sketch mode maybe. And there you go. And there's already my lines in the background. So these are just the sketchy lines. I will delete them. And then brush tool symmetry in place. Like there. And then pressing enter accepts the symmetry. And then if you start drawing, you can see that we have uh, the drawing set up. Actually, if I move this all the way to the top, you will see it better. Okay, there you go. So it just took a little bit of a setup, but you can see how it works. So essentially whatever I do on the left side, it will replicate it on the right side. And this can help to draw faces, uh, easily draw all the proportions that we need and so on and so forth. We can uh, create the face, eyes and so on and so forth. So what you can uh, do with Photoshop, of course, is not only just a vertical symmetry, but you can also do uh, horizontal and even dual axis, which is interesting. So if we set up a dual axis, and I'm going to just do this in a separate file because I think it's a little bit too busy, this uh, document, to make any changes visible properly. So if I set up a new dual axis, I can start drawing and you can see how it is drawing in all different, uh, in all the four panels in this symmetry. So obviously we can, for example, draw a little bit more structured uh, drawing and we can use any of our brushes. Even the, the different tools, the brush based tools will work with this. So this is also really cool. And another feature that we have is the circular or spiral symmetry or even wavy line symmetry. These are quite fun as well. So if I just try this out, maybe the spiral, you can see it's almost like drawing a pattern along the spiral. And I could go further away for, from it if I wanted to go closer and so on and so forth. Now, obviously I'm just doing a very quick example so there's nothing beautiful in it but you can use this for all kinds of things. So again, designing chains, for example, or uh, like a jewelry necklace, uh, there's, there's, there's loads of things you can use uh, this feature for, like a rope is, is very quick and easy to do these type of things. Now, the other thing I wanted to show you is that we have also changes for the path tool. And that is again, a welcome addition. Uh, because with the path tool, you can also do a lot of things in Photoshop, especially obviously drawing, but also for making selections. And first thing that you will notice is that it already looks slightly different than before. So let me just go back to the pen tool. And with the pen tool, when I start drawing a path, it looks slightly different. So it's not that gray outline as it used to be. It has a blue uh, outline and slightly more refined look of the path. Before it used to be really hard to see the path itself. Now, 
What you can actually do in Photoshop CC 2018 is that you can go into path options here in the uh, options bar and you can even increase the thickness. You can set it maybe to three pixels. You can set it to a different color, maybe to cyan. And you can also even set it to a uh, custom size if you wanted to. Plus you have the rubber band option, which we used to have there, which you can turn off or on depending how you prefer to use it. But essentially what happens is that whenever you draw, you will get a much thicker outline if you prefer to draw like that. Of course, that might be a little bit too much. So it might be overpowering when you're drawing. But honestly, I really like this feature and it will help a lot in making selections, for example. So I'm going to set this back to one pixel. I think that's big enough. So it goes back to that size. And the default color is actually quite good most of the time. All right. Now, let me uh, let me show you something else. We also have the curvature pen tool, which is another interesting feature with this one. And for this, I don't even need to use the tablet. I can just use uh, the mouse. With this one, you don't need to click and drag. This automatically creates curves for you. That's why it's called curvature tool or curvature pen tool. So if I just simply click, click, I will be creating a curved shape. And notice how it automatically bends everything in the right direction to make it look nice and smooth. So I can create any curved shape, okay? And then at the end, what you can do, and that's the most interesting thing about it, is that you can start moving these points around and notice that not only the point that I'm moving is going to change, but also the points around it will change. So when I move this, maybe, I don't know, let's, let's just move this one around a bit. Notice how the other two curves will also update. So it's almost like sculpting, really or like working with something fluid that adapts and automatically changes its shape how you are changing the actual points. Now, if you double click on a point, that will become a, a sharp point. So double cl clicking can turn a curved point into a sharp point and back as well. So double clicking can do the same. And of course, you can add more points as well on your curve. If I point, uh, click again, I can add additional points on it. So this is something that we haven't had in Photoshop. We had it in Illustrator, but now in Photoshop. Now we have it here as well, and it's more consistent. So what I would like to uh, also show you is uh, a little bit of a demonstration of uh, the connection between Photoshop and Photoshop Sketch, which is an app on uh, mobile devices. Now, if you guys haven't used this before, I highly recommend to try it out because this improved a lot as well. So once again, great for illustrators. And now I'm going to show you a few examples. I'm using my iPad Pro and I'm going to share this on my screen. Just give me one second. Just mirror it to my screen if it tries to come up, hopefully it will come up. Okay, one second. Uh, it's always the same whenever I need it. <laughs> it doesn't come up, of course. And uh, maybe it's because I'm doing the live stream, but uh, maybe because the iPad was off for a bit. So I'm just going to uh, restart this application. Just give me one second and then hopefully we can get it up and working. All right, there you go. Just had to restart it. Okay, so uh, here we are on my iPad and I'm going to grab my Apple Pencil and I will start Apple Sketch, the app, oh, sorry, not Apple Sketch, Photoshop Sketch. It's just called Adobe Sketch actually, that's the, that's the right name. But it's almost like drawing in Photoshop, but on your mobile device. And <clears throat> I'm a big fan of the Witcher series, so I just drew this uh, recently. Um, this uh, little illustration on the iPad. And what I prepared here is just a very simple example of showing that the brushes that you create in Photoshop, now you can load onto your iPad and use them in Adobe Sketch. 
So uh, here I can show you that I have Kyle's brushes loaded already, like this one, the wet edge brush. And this is the same, the, it works exactly the same way on um, the mobile version or on the iPad as and, and on in Photoshop. So if I start drawing with this, you can see once again how nicely it emulates uh, the watercolor effect. So once again, let me just zoom closer and you can see that I even have the canvas texture in place. So this is again something why um, there's a difference between drawing in Illustrator and drawing in Photoshop. Photoshop again can do these type of realistic textures and traditional media much better than Illustrator or it's much faster and easier to achieve it. And you can see if I draw over it, again, it starts to bleed and overlap and multiply itself. So for example, if I wanted to draw a big circle in the background, which could be a nice compositional element, it will look quite nice and natural, like a real uh, watercolor. Let's just try this again. I'm trying to draw it and make it look more rounded, but intentionally keep it a little bit rough. So that gives it a watercolor effect. And of course, we could start drawing over the character as well. If I change the color, maybe just pick, pick a browner color, something like that, a darker brown color, reduce the size, and then we can start painting over these details as well, like the belt and then the other belt and if I press harder, it makes it bigger, but I can press harder and then add a bit more of the uh, paint on these details. And then let's just go down here and so on and so forth. Uh, you can imagine that this could work quite nicely. And the good thing about this application is that this is, or this app is creating already layers. So if I want, I can always send this work into Photoshop and continue refining my work there. But to be honest, on the mobile, um, I mean, on the iPad itself, it's amazing that you can draw directly on the screen. Similarly to a Cintiq like what I have in, in the back. Um, while with the Cintiq, obviously, it's a very big and difficult uh, tool to move around with. With this one, I can move easily. I can sit down in a calf and start drawing. And to be honest, I think for me at least, it's almost as good as a Cintiq, or maybe I would risk to say it is better than a Cintiq to draw on the iPad. And using uh, Adobe Sketch, using with, especially now with these amazing brushes. So you can see how quickly I can create that watercolor style um, style painting. And of course I intentionally are not following I'm not following the lines perfectly because that will make it look even more natural and it will give an interesting overall look. Okay. So if you want to replicate the uh, traditional media, it's it's important to look at the original type of art and to be able to get that feel, you have to actually work like uh, with the traditional media. So if you never tried working with watercolor, you probably will try to draw with it and try to, like here in digital, you will try to make it perfectly filling up the edges, while in real life you will very, it will be very hard to do that, it's almost impossible. So it's better to, to make it realistic in a way that you won't make it look perfect. Again, it's not a vector illustration. It tries to resemble a traditional media illustration. Okay, so that was just a little uh, example of how you can use Photoshop brushes. But I wanted to show you that if I press and hold on this brush, I can go back and I can find all kinds of other brushes like effects. And I think under effects, we have a really cool splatter brush. I think it's this one. And by dragging the color onto an existing color, we can uh, use it again. Let's select the right layer. There you go. We can create like a splatter effect as well. And maybe if, if we turn this down a bit, make it darker. 
I can add a bit more here as well. So we can have, again, it can be paint, it can be blood, whatever you want this to be. Um, and it can look quite gory after a while. But yeah, so that's, again, just shows that these type of brushes, obviously we had access to before, but now we have access to them both on our mobile devices and on the desktop version of the application. So honestly, I think that is a huge thing and it really changes the way we produce artwork uh, with uh, Photoshop. So the last thing I wanted to quickly show you, th these were mainly the features that I wanted to go through. Uh, the last thing I wanted to show you is that we have a little illustration here which I've done just before uh, starting this presentation. And these are all Kaya's brushes, so I just tested them out. And uh, I won't have time to recreate this. I thought that I might do this during the presentation, but because Halloween is coming up, I wanted to uh, just show you again, using these brushes, try to replicate uh, the traditional media and don't try to force uh, like a vector style uh, illustration. The whole point with it is to be free and and express yourself. So this is like crayon, uh, chalk, watercolor, and then we have a marker as well with which I did the uh, lettering. And then the only thing that, that I did with another tool and not the brush tool are the little bat wings, which I did with the curvature tool. So once again, just to show that to you, uh, if you are not good with drawing with the pen tool, the curvature tool will really help you out. Because with this, uh, let me just draw this here on, on the bottom. With this, I can just click, click. There's already a nice curve. Then double click click, double click, so keep those straight, and then click, 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 and click. And then I just have to double click on the corner again, double click here. Actually, it might be one, one point less, so I will have to click there as well, and move that up, and then double click here again. Just see how quickly I could create this shape uh, without actually worrying about those curves. So instead of click and dragging like you are used to drawing with the pen tool, the curvature tool is all about clicking and double clicking and then moving these points around. So adjusting how you want them to be curved. And the cool thing is really, it's so easy to create very nicely constructed shapes. So like this wing as well, I can really refine where I want each of these points to be to create a nice bat wing that I can use in the illustration. All right, so uh, once again, I hope this demonstration was useful and we have time because it was a little bit shorter presentation today. Uh, we have time. I would like to ask if there's any questions. I can uh, look at the chat now and I can see if there's any questions coming in. I will try to reply to a few before we finish off and um, Okay, let's see if there's any questions coming in. Mm -hmm. um, by the way, okay, I can see uh, I have a question, or maybe it's, it's like a shortcut question, as I can see. Old backspace problem in Photoshop CC 2018. I'm guessing that is for coloring uh, layers. I, I it, To me, it still seems to work. So if I select two layers, I can still press Alt Backspace or Control Backspace to fill it in with my foreground or background color. That works, but maybe you thought of a selection to be filled in. Let's see if that works for me. So if I select an area, Alt Backspace, no, that still works for me. Um, so I'm not sure, Sise, what you meant about Alt Backspace. If you can elaborate on it, uh, I might be able to help you out. Jake is asking, uh, that I just want to say thank you for all your oh, okay th thank you so much um, oh you got a job of the back of them from my tutorials uh, helping you learning the pro program that's brilliant Jake I'm so so ha happy and glad for you um, and good luck with your job um, keep up the great work and then I promise I will um, do more videos on Illustrator as well uh, I'm planning a whole series on that here on YouTube. So 
uh, there will be a lot to learn and actually whoever is here interested in concept art and illustration in general um, I have a friend actually a company who's interested in doing a whole series here live on YouTube about uh, digital art and concept art uh, mainly with Photoshop so that would be also very exciting so um, Yes, you see, all, all backspace to fill foreground color works for me. I just tested it out now, so I can fill the whole layer if I wanted to. I'm using it the same way it used to be. So there might be some, some setting that uh, is wrong in your one. I, I don't know whether it sh how to change it, but uh, it works fine for me. Hopefully, um, it's not a common issue. Well, I, I haven't seen it since I upgraded. Um, cool. Um, yeah, I can share the Halloween PSD. I can't share, unfortunately, the um, Suicide Squad PSD because that's only if you if you go on the Patreon site of Patrick Brown, you can download the PSD for that file as well. But uh, I'm going to share this uh, PSD for the little Halloween character if you guys are interested. Also on my Patreon, so you can download it. Um, but let's see what else. Uh, will we have a live stream next week? Uh, yes, I am, I'm going to try to do it. It might not be on Sunday, um, but I will m make sure I will come more often uh, with new content. And Paul is asking, what's the best way to minimize extra points on circle without changing its shape? Okay, so you have a vector circle shape and you want to minimize the extra points on it without changing its shape. To be honest, I think this curvature tool is very good in that sense as well. Because if I just draw four points, okay, it creates an almost perfect circle, right? If I add extra points on it, it's not going to do anything because it is still a perfect circle. So if I wanted to, I can move these points around, but if I then press backspace, I can delete them delete just these and it's still going to keep its shape quite nicely thanks to the fact that it's a special type of shape it's not a normal shape it is something that was created with the curvature tool so you can think of the curvature tool almost like as a path 2.0 it's a more advanced and more smart path actually that would be quite a cool name smart path um, I should tell that to Adobe to use that um, Okay, uh, da, 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 da. My, the PS, uh, the Photoshop brushes that I used in this demo are all the, the, the brushes released with CC 2018 from Kyle uh, T. Websa. But uh, I have also a set of my own, uh, which I will probably share on Patreon. I have to tidy them up, especially now that I can organize them. I will probably start sharing the brushes that I created in the past. Uh, but to be honest, uh, I would probably start recreating a lot of them because uh, with this smoothing feature, there's a lot of things that I would do differently. So thanks to the new features released in this version, I might revamp a little bit my own old brushes that I've been working with. Uh, I, to be honest, I prefer to work with brushes created by other artists that I like and I admire because uh, it's a lot of t lot of work to set up brushes and make them work well. Um, okay, let's see if there's any more questions. Uh, da, da, da. Cool. I think um, I think that's all. I can't see any more questions popping up. So thank you so much, guys, for joining me today and uh, make sure you check out the um, Patreon site for the files that I'm going to share there and then in the description below once this recorded version comes up you will find all the relevant links that I mentioned today and also if you want to um, find out more about Illustrator and Photoshop I'm in the process of updating all my master classes to the latest version where I'm going to go in much more depth through the CC 2018 new features. Um, so anyone who's upgrading now from CS6 would be a good time to uh, jump into these master classes. Uh, they are not 
update it just yet, but I'm in the process of updating them. In the meantime, they are up to date to CC 2017 and you can find them on my website. So once again, thanks a lot for joining me today and I will see you guys in the next one. Have a good night and goodbye. Thanks a lot for staying till the end. I hope you found this video useful. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel as I'm adding similar content regularly. If you are interested in learning more from me, you should probably check out my comprehensive training courses on my site. I have more than 200 hours of video training from beginner to expert levels with lots of exercises, quizzes and resources to help you develop your skills and become a professional designer. Just click on this link and create an account to start your free trial. Thanks again for joining me today and I hope to see you in the next one.